Yeah, so we launched Uber Advertising about nine months ago, 12 months ago. Um, it's been an exciting journey. I've been you know, here for the ride. I joined Uber um, this time last year, so I've kind of seen the, the build of it. Um, and what, you know, the impetus of Uber Advertising was that we have this massive global scale of users. They're already on the platform. They're already taking rides. They're already ordering grocery and convenience. How can we hit them with a message at the right time when we know that they're attentive, we know that they want to see it. So, you know, it was a natural progression from having a global community of monthly active platform consumers to then serving the messages when they, when they wanted to see them. In that way, it feels very endemic. It, it kind of is, people have said, why, why you know, I, we thought you did this already. You've, you've, you know, why are you doing it now? Um, but it feels very natural. It's, it's like the, the consumer wants to see it. They're in the mindset to receive the messages and, and we're here to deliver it. So it's been a very, very easy progression into, into advertising. So how do you fit into a typical CPG's media plan? What kind of marketing objectives and needs are you satisfying? That's the exciting part. We can really do it all. So I think that you know some CBGs come to us because they know that we can drive conversion for them on grocery and convenience. Also in restaurants, you have the McDonald's, you have the Chick-fil-A's, right? That's really important to Coke and Pepsi. So there's a wide swath of media that they can activate on the Uber Eats side. On the ride side, they're excited because they're like, look, we can reach you in a car when you're going to Target, to Walmart, to a concert, to an event. We know the mindset that you're in. We're, you know, we're, we're again hitting you when you're relaxed. Mom of three, a use case of one. If I get an ad coming home from the office going to my apartment, I would love some ice cream or I'd love like a beauty treat for myself. That can be ordered right there through the advertisement and in the car. So they like the omni-channel approach. They like the conversion aspect plus the brand aspect. And I think that bringing them both together is, you know, is creating a lot of value for, for CPGs. I mean, when you talk about the offer like that, it's clearly extraordinarily powerful yeah. and clearly very powered by data. Yeah. Where are you in your data enablement journey? I mean, there's, this is the, probably the reason I joined Uber. There's only a couple of players globally that have the amount of first party data that we have. It's massive in scale. You're talking about purchase data across Uber Eats. You're talking about probably one of the, you know, the premier sets of location data globally. And so how do you marry that and use that together for, for CPGs and, and you know, other, frankly, any, any other kind of sub-vertical um, business that wants to use it? It's very powerful um, and it's, it's real time. It's it, the, and, and it's intent based, which I think is also exciting for um, a lot of our clients. So the first party data is paramount. Um, we're, you know, we're still kind of figuring all the myriad of ways in which we can use it um, to help our customers to help ha and also have them meld their data with ours for the best outcomes. But certainly um, a powerful set and, and we feel like it's uh, industry leading. And from a consumer point of view, the, the, the incredible relevance of what you do feels very different to other media. We're very used as consumers to having interruptive ads which don't really fit with our mindset. Yep. But you, I guess, are delivering ads that are incredibly relevant. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're in a car, right? And I think it's the, the consumer only has, what, five apps that they use often on their phone. Uber happens to be one of them globally for, for most consumers. We did a poll, most people have Uber downloaded on their, on their phone, right? So they use it, they're using it intraday, intraweek, and it feels very natural to get messaging um, that's not disruptive, that's additive to their, to their own consumer experience. Um, and then, you know, again, pairing the data with it, you can really serve them that something that's relevant, that's exciting, and, um, and, and it makes sense for their, their, their mindset and their time of day. So we're seeing this amazing growth in, I guess, non-traditional media yep. companies building out businesses like yours. How do you see this space developing over the next few years? What do you think the next couple of years will hold in store? I mean, I, you know, we're here today talking about retail media. I, I think we need to kind of take a step back and look at the consumer. So what does the consumer want to see? What mindset are they in? They're in a very intent-based mindset. That could be retail media, it could be commerce media, wh whatever you want to call it. Their, their mindset is one that they want to receive an ad that they would potentially convert on or that they might consider, you know, consider a purchase. So instead of, I think, kind of typifying what these forms of media are, just looking at this global platform where you can reach people in a very, um, you know, in a, in a mindset that they want to purchase is the powerful nature of what, of what Uber can provide. And there's going to be new mediums cropping up. Like, there, you know, I think it's, for a long time, it was two to three players, and now people are seeing, okay, time is shifting. People's purchasing habits are 
rapidly changing. And so how are they, how do they want to receive the messages that, that are important to them? And then how do they want to take that and, and, you know, take an action off of it? Um, so a lot to be gleaned, I think, from new mediums and ways that we can insert messaging to, to consumers when they're on the go. And lastly, advertising is very much a team sport. Yeah. Are there partners and companies who you're really keen and excited to collaborate with? Yeah, and I love that you said that because you know we're we're at a stage in the game where we're building out a business globally. And you know, Uber is an advertising has an advertising business. We have we have many other lines of business that aren't advertising. So we're saying, who is the best in breed that we can bring together with with our offering to build as fast as we need to build to be a billion dollar business by 2024, 20, 25, right? We've said that publicly. So Critio is one major partner that we're utilizing. They're, they're best in breed in what they do. We're going to you know, pair our, our offering with theirs and of course work together to expand things globally as, as fast as we can. Using partners like that, measurement partners, data partners to help accelerate our trajectory because we're, we got to, we, we also have to build our rider business, our delivery business, our freight business, all the other businesses that Uber's in. We're going to partner with the best that can help us scale globally quickly. Um, and, and there's a couple examples of, of who we're using. It's going to be a hugely exciting couple of years. It Megan, is. thank you so much for yeah. sharing some thoughts with us. Yeah, thank you.